You know what goes good with a nice summer watermelon? A juicy, delicious catfish. That's right, y'all. Today, the Silver Bullet is going out on its first catfish mission. It's hot. We're going to do some jug lining, and we're going to bring some catfish back here, and we're going to be cooking them on a pellet grill, a way I've never done it before, and trying to get a, a new flavor. And we're going to be doing that using portable power with the Blue Eddy. And yes, you guessed that today's video is sponsored by Blue Eddy. I love using these Blue Eddy units. These are built like a tank. They are reliable, and I've yet to have an issue with one. And in this video, we're using the AC240, which is a unit that they recently launched. And it'll handle a sustained load of 2400 watts, and it's got over 1500 watt hours. But this unit is really made to get as down and dirty as you want to in the great outdoors. I'm just soaking the heck out of it right here with the water hose, and then we're going to plug it into my portable AC unit and kick it on. So it's IP65 rated, meaning it can basically go anywhere you want to go except scuba diving. And it just powers up and rips like a champ. Like I said, I've never had an issue with these. And this one is really made to go anywhere with you. AC240 is great at handling those high frequency loading applications. Your fridge, your freezers, heaters, a coffee machine, microwave. We're using an AC unit right here. This thing can handle just about everything. So if you're RV, trailer, or truck camping, one of these units would be awesome. And you can leave them outside and not have to worry about them. So I'm going to be showing you more real-time use in this video later when we're using the grill. But if you guys want to pick one of these up, there's two links down below. You can get them on Amazon if you want. You can save even more if you go to their official website and use my link. So that is down below. And don't forget to use my link if you're shopping on their website. Now let's get on the water and get to jugging for some cats. We're loaded for bear, so first thing we got to do, rig up our long pole, get under one of these trees, and catch some gills. Wow, I just doodle socked a crappie out of ultra shallow water right there. Oh, that was crazy. Got him. Oh my gosh, I lost him. Oh. Okay, there's a bite. Got him. Landed. Wabam. We have bait. We have bait. The booger fly has come through. All right. Stick him in the well. Try to get a couple more and we'll get busting loose here. Come on, baby. Let's go. Oh. Live scope to micro. All right, that right there will give us two or three jugs. Come on, baby. Let's go. That's a big one. It's a big boy. Wah bam. All right. Now we got some bluegill. I guess the sunfish just needed the sun to come out to get to bite. But unfortunately, it is now 10.30. I was hoping to have jugs in the water by like 8.30, but we got bait now. Good sized gills and we should get, you know, probably six or seven jugs out of that and get us started. I found a hump that looked like it had some good catfish activity on it. So I'm gonna go main lake, go out to the points, humps, look for where that bait is, and I'm gonna start planting those jugs out there. Just saw a catfish right here. There he is, cruising the bottom. See that? Cruising around that bait. That's where we want to be. All right, so here's our jug. It's going to be a deep one right here. I got a six ounce on it. Um, these conditions, you know, two or three ounces is perfectly fine. 
And I'm probably gonna monitor these pretty good because there's a ton of boat traffic today. I don't want anybody clipping them or stealing them or anything like that. So we got our cutting board. Just need to get, get a gill out. Break out our old timer. I like to uh, cut those spines and rays off to kind of prevent any hook fouling. Three good baits out of this. So we'll go ahead and put the head on this big boy hook here. Make sure our hook points not don't have any scales on it. Just like no wind out here today, so we don't have to contend with that one. Alright. 25 feet deep, so that's probably gonna need a little extra line. So cut those tails, cut the spines and rays. Oh, there's a couple more right there. A couple more on the move. Alright, bombs away. That's gonna hover probably around 20 foot, I think's where I got them set. If you guys have never seen my uh, jug creating video, I'll link it. But uh, these are really cheap and effective jugs. And if you know how to tie a couple knots, it'll make your life way easier. A little Prusik knot right there. Shove that in there. That's good to go. All right, boys, we're already getting one. It's bobbing. It's bobbing hard. Hey, if you're doing this and you are in a good area with jugs, you can expect to catch fish pretty much right away. Now, if you're just going out in the middle of a cove and just toss a jug, you know, you probably need to let it sit for a long time. But if you're around active feeding fish, uh, that's what I try to do. I try to find where the, the white bass and other predator species are feeding on shad. Uh, blue cats love that. I love to eat blue cats. They're one of my absolute faves. So I don't see our jug bobbing anymore, but that is not that is not a, a bad a bad thing. Sometimes they bite it, you get a you get a couple big jerks, big tugs, and then they just sit there. Movement. Movement. Oh yeah, I see it bobbing. It is bobbing. All right, first catfish catch in the silver bullet. Oh, we got slack in our line. Oh, definitely a catfish on here. Definitely a catfish on here. Let's get some goo in the silver bullet. That's a good one there. That's a good one. That's exactly what we're looking to do right there. Feeding on these open water humps. All right, let's throw him on the other side of the well. Get some water going in there. And we got one bait left. We'll go ahead and throw one on here and toss it back down real quick. And I try not to leave them on there too long because they will tangle up your lines if you let them all right let's send it back down boys well bam okay let's rig up a big boy right here big old head try to go after bertha a couple customers down there hope you're hungry enjoy so I've sort of put all my eggs into one basket here, but I feel like it's a pretty good basket. And because I'm out here in the middle of the day when I didn't want to be, it took me forever to catch bait. I think that most of the fish activity is gonna be um, out on these humps midday. That's still where the bait is. That's, you know, the bait wants to be close to cool water. I've set the majority of my bait and my jugs out here on one hump and I can monitor it all from right here, just sitting on spot log, monitoring the jugs. Uh, we had one really quick, within five minutes. Uh, it's been another five, 
six minutes or so and we have not had another bite yet but i'm still seeing activity on the graph there's there's bait on the bottom there's white bass moving through i've seen individual catfish cruising around with the scope and giving it uh it's like a holiday weekend a lot of people out on the water i don't like to just let my jugs i don't like to spray them all over the place when there's boats running around because props can cut them people don't see them and they just lose them also i'm sitting in around 25 feet of water it's uh it's basically a huge hump like a flat hump and uh, you know like multiple football fields big and the jugs aren't quite going to the bottom like the weight's not on the bottom the weight is in probably 20 foot or just off the bottom and those baits are a few feet off and they're floating and catfish will come up they smell it they'll, they'll come up uh, a few feet is like is is nothing i mean they'll, they'll come up you know 20 feet if it smells really good so that's a different strategy whether you want to like plant them in a spot have your weight go all the way to the bottom and sit there and be anchored uh, or if you want them to drift a little bit and cover water silver bullets ready for anything i bought this to be my multi-species boat so i don't care about getting catfish goo looks like a pretty significant chunk of catfish poop on there wasn't expecting that but uh it is what it is I'd love to have like the whole thing be sea deck and just wash it out, but we got crusty carpet and we'll just keep it poopy and crusty for now. Yep, we got a tug. Thought that one looked a little funny. Look at it go. I wonder if I could see him on live scope. Kind of crazy. You know what? This is the one that went off earlier. This is the lucky jug right here. Oh yeah, feel them on there. Doesn't feel as big as the last one, but it is indeed a blue cat that will eat. We got tugs. We got tugs on another jug. Like he hears the boat coming. Oh yeah, we got some weight on this one, boys. We got some weight. Come on, biggin. Woo! Woo -hoo. It's pulling back. It's pulling back good. Might be a good one. Oh yeah. Really nice blue cat. Ugh. Oh yeah, look at that one, y'all. Big juicy. That is gonna eat good, folks. You guys see these cats just hovering right here? This is the spot. So I'm gonna go grab my other jugs, stick them right here. They're hanging around that bait. They're just following those bait fish that are near the bottom right there. Chowing down. We got another, let's go. Pretty good tug on it. I think it's gonna be a decent one. Yeah, for it to tug the jug down, tug it around like that, it's gotta be a decent one. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Woo -wee. Yeah, I feel it pulling. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, gosh, look at that one, guys. Oh, man. Regulations for this lake, I can only keep five that are over 20 inches. This one is definitely over 20 inches. Look at that guy. Whew. I think that's more than enough meat for us. I got three really good ones and one little one. Let's make a marinade, y'all. Now, so I, I'm using a, a catfish recipe. I've never done this style before, smoking it. 
Uh, and I got this from Cowboy Kent Rollins. Uh, good old boy on the YouTubes. And uh, I actually met the guy. He's a really cool dude. Does uh, like chuck wagon cooking. Anyway, this is his recipe for catfish. So I got myself a big bowl. We're going to make a marinade here. Um, I'm a mixture of spices. This is a, a like a veggie rub. Uh, we're going to throw in a little uh, fajita spice rub. This is obviously something one we've never tried. Opening it for the first time. Uh, adding to that, we're gonna go with some Puerto Rican honey. This is actually out of a bottle, uh, a rum bottle. Um, bought this off a gentleman in a uh, little restaurant. No one spoke English. I'm, I think, well, it's obviously not regulated. Okay, now the guy that bottled this honey, he, he used an old rum bottle. I don't even know if he cleaned it. This is what it is. Me and Lojo, when we were filming uh, one of the Guggen Squad videos, we uh, we both got some honey for uh, for the fam to bring back a little taste to Puerto Rico. So that, that honey will add a little, uh, little sweetness and a little stick. Standard unit olive oil. We'll throw that in there. I'm gonna consult with my beautiful bride on how much is enough? Are you waiting for me to tell you stop? <laughs> Probably more than that, huh? Oh, definitely, Still, yeah. Yeah, I, this is my, literally my first marinade. Mm. Watch Cowboy Kent if you want like the actual recipe. Does but, he add any citrus, like a lemon or a lime or an orange? No. No? Okay, no. I would add some like fresh squeezed orange. These are our catfish right here. So these are actually ones that I did not catch uh, today. But these are some blues that we have, we've had uh, left over and um, I do like to let my catfish sit for like on ice for uh, at least overnight before I clean them. I just think it firms up the meat, makes it better. We always have a supply here at the treehouse. This is what we do. Catch them, clean them, smoke fish every day. Oh, those look amazing. Outstanding. These are good ones for, uh, for the grill. So that's dabbed off. Now we'll just slather it on there. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be a lot. Are you gonna put that in a bag? Yeah, I guess, I guess. Okay. Yeah, do you want a bag? Yeah, bag me out, babe. Oh wow, she already, she opened it with one hand. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll put that in there. Oh yeah, okay. Cowboy Kent knows what's up. Yeah, I normally don't go through these links on, on catfish to cook them, but they are such a delicious meat. And if you, even if you just catch a, a channel cat from your local pond, they are good. They're just really good, fresh. Incredible. Quite honestly, fish though, to eat. I don't think I liked catfish before we got married, and then you cooked catfish. Because you had a bad nostalgia about yes. it, right? Yeah. You, had, you had like a an idea of it that wasn't accurate. Yeah. Because most people, they, they eat at a catfish house or something and that's like all they that's all That's only they really fried know. catfish and that's it. You probably ate at that Austin awesome catfish what? house. What? Paw Patrol okay. doesn't work. Okay, see, I was gonna translate. That's Paw Patrol's <laughs> not working. Okay, we will uh, put that in the refrigerator and just let that chill for about 30 minutes to an hour. We're going to here? What is that? That's my smoker. You smell it? That's catfish. We're gonna eat it for dinner. Guys, I love my truck. I love my tailgate. I love, I love hooking the boat to the truck and just going camping right here. Like the, the, I just spend so much time right here that, that I, I'm, I'm loving the portability now of having a, a portable pellet grill and then having this to, to basically power everything. What I want to be able to, to know is like how long can I smoke something on here? If I, if I wanted to theoretically just leave the smoker out, do a beer can chicken or something and go fishing and then come back to it? Do I have the ability to do that? So we're gonna find out. How 
output right now is zero, which I don't really understand how that's working with this grill. 41% though, so we have gone down like 6% since we started. Okay, we're picking back up, just slowly adding to the heat element and then cutting off. So we're, we're at our temp and now this is like cruising speed. Grill's doing its thing, 225. I got a timer set for 30 minutes and we're 15 minutes into this thing right now. And we have dropped another couple of percentage points on the battery life, but just judging on the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes, um, once you get it up to temp, it's, it's really slow. Like this thing will definitely last a long time. It's pretty neat, so just cut that on. See, it, it bumps up, it'll bump up, like it's 225 right now with that heating element, still at 40%, and then it'll just cut off. So it's not a, con it's not a constant running, you know, 200 to 250 watts. But once this is done here in about 15 minutes, we're going to put some taters on in this little skillet. I'm gonna crank it up to like 400 and get a little crisp on them. So with this, I can stick it wherever I want. Like I said, I could literally put it in the boat with me if I want. It's always nice to cook next to the silver bullet too. Our first catfish mission, bringing home the bacon. Meow. In a phenomenal turn of events of just 100 degree heat for weeks, it is now, I think, in the low 80s. It, it feels incredible out here. Chickens are out doing their thing. OSG said she wanted a campfire. She's like, <laughs> first taste of fall, she puts a jacket on. Man. I mean, do you do you have a, a, a pumpkin spice latte right now? I mean, I just got a big old itch for going camping, like that fall weather. It's like, oh, I can just oh, yeah. smell it. Get the grill fired up, mm -hmm. the, the, the fire's going. Oh, perfect. 126. 122, 126. 125 these are perfect ready to pull guys wow i usually like to pull my fish around 125 and 130 is kind of the target so ooh, i need some tongs let me go grab some tongs and take them off let them rest these are going to be amazing oh no these are going to slide right off perfectly that's awesome let's go Excellent. Excellent. Okay. A quick little clean in here. 400. Let's see what that blue eddy is going to do. All right, we're still at 200. It's really not changing very much. So we've gone down around 10% in our power thus far. So plenty to do these fish and these taters. I'll tell you one thing, while this is getting up to temp, there ain't gonna be no more bugs in the back of my truck. They're all gonna be smoked out. Steph, put those in that skillet beautifully. See if we can close this thing up. Yes, we can. Just big enough to put that skillet in there. It's gonna be good, about 10 minutes here. Get them crispy. Serve them with the fish, it's gonna be phenomenal. Now let's take them in for a taste test. So it's got that smoke yeah. layer on it. Oh, it smells smoky. It Smoke. smells like a like a smoky barbecue. It doesn't yeah. smell fishy at all. Yeah, I used okay. a, uh, a hickory um, mm -hmm. smoke on it, so not too fruity. Fit out of the fish, the uh, potatoes. Potatoes, I thought putting the skillet in there. That That's hot, great. by the way, don't touch that. Oh, okay but it, I thought it did great on the potatoes. Now, OSG went ahead and boiled these before I put them on the uh, on the skillet. Too hot. So yeah, they're pretty hot. Me. But we got, you know, garlic and butter and all sorts of good stuff in there. Moment of truth. I'm gonna eat outside next to the fire for ambiance and uh, we've had bobcat or two coming in in the evenings. And usually when we have weather like this, the creatures come out for the chickens, so I'm, I'm monitoring my flock while I eat my, my catfish by the fire here, but let's see how we did. It's actually a little a little squishier than I would prefer. I probed it. I probed it um, 
at 1.30. Flavor's all there. But yeah, it's not flaking like I want it to. It's just a, just a squidge squishy. It's, it's, it's great, don't get me wrong. It's fantastic, but if I were to do this again, I think I would cook these at 350 for like 15, 20 minutes. You kind of get that, I don't know, just quicker cook and try to get more flake. If I was in the middle of the woods camping, I would say 10 out of 10. But with all my resources at home, having my probe and all that stuff, I would give myself like an 8.5. Well, y'all, I've said it before, but I think going out and fishing, bringing fish home to the fam, you know, preparing it right and watching them enjoy it is one of my favorite things in the outdoors. Not only gives me an excuse to go catch more, but it also gives me a sense of fulfillment that I'm doing it. And catfishing to me is not only fun, whether I'm catching them on jugs or rod and reel, but it's also that when you get them in the boat or you drag them up to shore, you got them in your hands, it's like, mm, that's gonna be dinner. And I know that's gonna be delicious. Fish, they're a natural resource. There are limits and regulations for a reason for you to keep and enjoy them. So thank y'all for tuning in today and don't forget to check out Blue Eddy. It's linked down below. If you guys wanna pick up one of these power stations for use in your shop, your tailgating, your truck camping, your remote hunting adventures, whatever you got going on in the outdoors, this is a great solution. And I'm working on rigging out my truck for an even better truck camping experience. I can't wait for the temps to cool off a little bit, but I'm working on AC unit, storage, sleeping situation, and keeping this in here semi-permanently, still be modular, but keep it in there semi-permanently where everything's kind of hooked up to it. It's it's my hub for power, for my fridge, my my pellet grill now, uh, AC, uh, powering computers and camera gear, whatever I need to charge. And the boat, powering the boat, I can't forget that. So thank you guys for tuning in. Smash that like button for delicious fishes, and I'll catch y'all on the next one.